Tamanaga will start a new section genetic disorders. He can follow with me in the pediatric board study guide. In a carrying a lot of genetic human body is made of cells and inside each cell there is a nucleus except the red blood cell and inside the nucleus there are 46 chromosomes and each chromosome is packed with coiled DNA carrying a lot of genetic information and the chromosomes are numbered 1 to 22 pairs and they are well known as autosomes or body chromosomes and uh, what number one is the largest chromosome and number two is the smallest chromosome this is how the genetics they are able to identify which chromosome is which by the size number one is the largest number 22 is the smallest and they are well known as autosomes or body chromosome then the uh, number 23 uh, pair which is well known as sex chromosomes uh, and it's xx is for female and xy is for males and as you see here, if we magnify one chromosome here, you will see well, this is one sister chromatid and another sister chromatid and attach with a centromere. And you see here different colors, different staining. This is well known as G banding because of the staining with Guillaume's stain. And the concentration is different, more localized or more concentrated in area than others because the Guillaume's stain is specific for phosphate and become more concentrated in the area where it is more uh, adenine and thiamine. That's why you will see different different staining as you see here. And this is very important for information about translocations and rearrangement. If we look more closely at one of the chromosome, you will see there is a short arm and long arm. The short arm marked by P, which is petite or small. So short arm is P and long arm is Q. Very important to understand how the genetist identify the location of the uh, deletion, for example, or the genetic defect. So usually they identify with a number. So how to understand this number exactly like an address, like country, state, city, street, and house number, very, very similar. So let's take this example, the George syndrome. Uh, you have here, this is cube. It's 10 for long arm and the 22 is means the uh, number of the chromosome. So the number of the chromosome is the country, is the country, which is the chromosome 22. Then the state, which is the Q, which is the long arm of chromosome 22. And then uh, the genetics, they divide the uh, long arm of the chromosome to regions or bands. So uh, one, number one is the closest to the centromere and number two is afterward. So as the number numbers are increasing, they are more far from where, from the centromere. Same thing with the short arm, it can be divided to one and it also can be divided to two. So here there is a region one in the short arm of chromosome 22. Then if you expand and look more at this region, at region number one, you will have uh, more numbers and it will be numbered the same way exactly. One is the closest to the centromere and two is the uh, afterward and the three is the most far from the centromere. So as you see here, one here is the uh, belong to the one of the original band. So this is the sub band. So one, 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 then one, two, three. So you have one, 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 two, one, three. So is the correct way to read it is one, one, not 11. So one, 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 two, one, three. Then if you magnify one of the, if you take this band and magnify it, it will also will be classified to sub, sub band, sub, sub band which is one one belong to this one. So this green belong to the first one, the yellow belong to the second one, the, the sub band and the sub sub band is in red color here is one and two, one and two, one, because it's close to the centromere, then afterward is two. So uh, how to understand these numbers? So here uh, the D. George syndrome is a micro deletion in the longer arm of chromosome 22. Uh, band one and the sub band one again and the sub sub band uh, two so this is uh, the how to understand these numbers so the correct way to read this one a micro deletion in the long arm of chromosome 22 one one point two again let's take another example uh, here you have a uh, 5q what is 5q stand for is the long arm of chromosome 5 this is chromosome 5 this is the long arm of chromosome 5 so uh, 5q means the long arm of chromosome 5 then another one if you have uh, this in the sex chromosome there is no number you will say x so xp xp means the short arm of uh, chromosome x p stand for petite so p is the short arm of chromosome x long arm of chromosome 5 
Let's take another example, cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disease affects the lung and gastrointestinal tract, usually associated with a chronic lung disease and failure to thrive and malabsorption. So the scientists were able to identify the genetic defect in cases of cystic fibrosis in, in 1989. So they give it this number. This is the address on the chromosome. So how to read that? This is the long arm of chromosome 7. This is chromosome 7. This is the long arm of chromosome 7. And the defect is localized in band 3. And here is the band 3 and sub band 1 and sub sub band 2. So how to read this correctly is a genetic defect where in the long arm of chromosome 7, 3, 1 2, uh, because of defect in the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator, which is responsible for chloride ions. Chromosomal abnormalities, aneuploidy and structural abnormalities. This is the main a chromosomal abnormalities. Aneuploidy means abnormal number of chromosome. Uh, for example, 47 instead of 46. Structural abnormalities, the numbers are the same, but there is a problem with the structure, like for example, translocation, duplication, and deletion. So this is structural abnormalities. Genomic imprinting will explain that mitochondrial inheritance expansion of trinucleotide repeats. Let's start with the abnormal chromosome number or aneuploidy. First example of uh, abnormal chromosome number or aneuploidy is monosomy. Monosomy means the loss of one chromosome, so 45. So 45 instead of 46, this is a Turner syndrome. As you see here, just one X instead of two. So one X instead of two, this is Turner syndrome. The second most famous example of uh, aneuploidy or abnormal chromosomal number is trisomy, which is gain of one chromosome. So you have 47 instead of 46. So you have 47, 47, 47, 47 because of gaining one extra chromosome. If this location is 21, chromosome 21, you have one extra here in chromosome 21. This is well known as Down syndrome. If you have one extra chromosome in the, the chromosome 18, so this is, will be Edward syndrome. If you have it in 13, you will have, this is Patau syndrome. If you have it in the sex chromosome and additional X here, this will be well known as Klinefelter syndrome. Structural abnormalities or aberrations is deletions, duplications, the translocation. Deletions means a part of the chromosome, like here, part of the chromosome or a sequence of DNA lost lost during DNA replication. So you see the, here the genetic material here, or part of the chromosome is missing here in this area. This is called deletions. Or the opposite, the part of a chromosome or DNA sequence is duplicated during the process of DNA replication. And the translocation will explain in the next slide. Translocations is exchange between the chromosomes. We have reciprocal translocations and Robertsonian translocation. Reciprocal translocation can occur between any of the chromosomes. If, for example, if we take one and two, if you have one piece of chromosome, one goes to two, and one of chromosome two goes to one, if they are the same, this is balanced translocation. Many people are healthy living with balanced translocation. If it's too much of one goes to two or too much of two goes to one, this will be well known as unbalanced translocation. And this can be associated with health problem. Robert Sunni and translocation is same idea, but the translocation occurs between specific chromosomes, well known as acrocentric chromosomes, chromosomes with very short, uh, short arm. Uh, and normal long arm. These uh, chromosomes are 13, 14, 15, 21, and 22. When 14 combined with 21 will give you a longer chromosome combination of 21 and 14. And uh, of course, this will be negligible. So this patient will have 45 chromosome and is a carrier. This patient is healthy, no problem, as long as there is no children. But once they have children, the problem can happen if they pass 21 copy to another uh, two copies of 21, they will have triazomy 21, and this can be a cause of a rub, uh, Down syndrome, Robertsonian translocation. If they pass, for example, one copy of 14 to the other two copies of 14 will have a, a triazomy 14, this is, uh, can cause miscarriage. If it's 13, it will be Patau syndrome. Uh, so this is very important to understand uh, the idea of Robertsonian translocation because this can be associated with Down syndrome. So again, Robertsonian translocation occurs in the acrocentric chromosome, chromosome 13, 14, 15, 21, and 22. Let's start a new section, Mendelian inheritance.
Mercedes was derived by Gregor Mendel, uh, is a monk from Austria. He planted a uh, piece in the uh, back of the church at 1856 and 1866. Uh, then he tabulated upon its square and he recognized the organism. It has genes and the genes it has alleles. If the alleles are similar, is well known as homozygous allele. If they are different, it is heterozygous alleles. Autosomal dominant. Autosomal means body chromosomes, means not sex chromosomes. This means that uh, any genetic condition associated with autosomal can affect both males and females equally. Uh, dominant means that the affected allele can be expressed by itself. Like in this case, for example, the, let's pretend this father is having Marfan syndrome and the affected allele will be in uppercase because it's dominant. So any child is having or carrying the affected allele, the uppercase M will be affected with the Marfan syndrome. So uh, if we use it here, the Punnett square, this is for the dad, this is for the mom, uh, you will have a 50% chance of having a child with, Ma with Marfan syndrome, another 50% chance to have a child without Marfan syndrome. So every time the mom is pregnant, if the mom is healthy, of course, uh, she has a chance of having an affected child, 50%, and also she has a chance of having a child without Marfan syndrome, 50%. So every time, regardless how many healthy children she has, regardless how many affected she may have all of them with Marfan, she may have no child with Marfan, she may have 50 and 50. So uh, this depending on the time of the mom is pregnant. So every time she's pregnant, she has a 50% chance to have Marfan or without Marfan. So again, autosomal dominant presence of one abnormal gene uh, on one of the autosomes, chromosome 1 to 22. Both sexes are equally affected. Both sexes can transmit to offspring. No generation is skipped unless not completely expressed. 50% a chance to have a child with the disease. Every affected child has a parent with the disorder, except the new or spontaneous mutation. Examples of autosomal dominant osteogenesis imperfecta, neurofibromatosis, polycystic kidney disease, and achondroplasia. Autosomal recessive. Autosomal means the body chromosomes, means the conditions associated with autosomal can affect both males and females equally. Recessive means that the affected gene or allele require another one in order to express the disease. Different than autosomal dominant, one affected allele will express the disease. Here you require two together. Uh, so in this case, for example, this is a father with sickle cell trait. This is a mother with sickle cell trait. If they decide to have a children, there is a four possibilities. 25% uh, chance to have a healthy child, 50% chance to have a child carrying the disease or uh, having sickle cell trait, and another 25% chance to have a child with sickle cell anemia. So uh, uh, the autosomal recessive, they can have carrier. Autosomal dominant, there is no carrier, either sick or not sick. Here, the chances are 25% to have a child with sickle cell anemia, 25% uh, chance to have a child healthy with is not a carrier, uh, is not having a sickle cell anemia or anything, just healthy, and 50% uh, chance to have a child carrying the disease. Autosomal recessive involves mutation in both copies, alleles at a gene, locus, non sex chromosomes or autosomes 1 to 22, both sexes are equally affected because it's autosomal. Males and females can each transmit a copy of mutated gene. Recurrence risk for parents with a previous affected child is 25%. The risk of parents who are carrying a mutated gene to have an affected child is uh, 25%. Consanguinity uh, increases the risk of uh, having an offspring with an autosomal recessive disorder. Example, cystic fibrosis, thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, familial Mediterranean fever. X-link recessive is inheritance of mutated gene on a X chromosome or sex chromosome X. So this has to do with the gender. Only females can transmit the disease to their sons. Boys are affected and female carriers are generally unaffected. Female carriers, they have 25% risk of having an affected son, son sick with the disease. And 25% risk of, for a carrier daughter and 50% chance to have a child not affected at all that is not inheriting or carrying the mutated X-link gene. Examples of that, hemophilia A and B, Duchenne muscular dystrophy and G6PD deficiency. X-link dominant, uh, the dominant gene is carried on the X chromosome, affects both males and females, 50% uh, chance of having an affected child if one parent is affected. Uh, 
Diseases associated with X-linked uh, dominant are very rare. Examples, X-linked hypophosphatemic rickets, incontinentia pigmenti, uh, Acardi syndrome. Acardi syndrome is uh, agenesis of corpus callosum or dysgenesis infantile spasm and uh, chorioretinal lacunae or holes. Uh, Red syndrome, Albert syndrome. Albert syndrome is deafness and hematuria and renal failure. The, most of the cases of Albert syndrome are X-linked dominant. Genomic imprinting is very interesting. If the mutated gene is transmitted from the father, it will give you a different disease than if it's transmitted from the mother, the same mutated gene. Like in this example, we have prader willi syndrome. The affected gene is transmitted from the father. The affected gene uh, is uh, located in band 1113 in the long arm of chromosome 15. The inherited allele from the mother will be silent or inactive. prader willi syndrome is well known with a hypotonia after birth and failure to thrive initially then they start to have hyperphysia obesity small hands and feet and hypogonadism and intellectual disability in case of Engelmann syndrome is the opposite the affected gene is transmitted from the mother and this gene is the same gene uh, of predator willy but is transmitted from the mother which is a mutation on the band 1113 on the long arm of chromosome 15 the inherited allele from the father in this case is silent or inactive like is not there the angel man syndrome the presentation they are happy personality frequent laughter intellectual disability speech delay microcephaly epilepsy and ataxia remember angel man is maternal let's look at this pedigree and try to understand the yellow is the affected or the diseased person. The, this, mom, this mom here is diseased or affected with a certain condition. And here is the father here is affected with a certain condition. But none of the generation of this father is having a disease, but all the generation of the mother, they are having the same disease. This is a classic pedigree of mitochondrial inheritance. The mother is the one who will be able to transmit the disease to all her generations, but the father will not be able to transfer the disease to his generation because of lack of mitochondrial substance in the sperm. The mother, she has in her eggs lots of mitochondrial substance and genes, and this will be transmitted to all her generations. Mitochondrial disorders are transmitted mainly from the mother is unipaternal inheritance from the mother only. Uh, why? Because the egg, it has uh, from 100,000 up to 1 million mitochondrial DNA. While the sperm, it has very few. So it's rarely the sperm or the father will be able to pass uh, abnormal mitochondrial DNA to offspring. But the mother will be able to pass uh, the mutated or abnormal uh, mitochondrial DNA to all of her offspring. Uh, and this will cause unipaternal inheritance of mitochondrial diseases. Mitochondrial diseases like MELAS. MELAS is mitochondrial encephalopathy, lactic acidosis and stroke, and Kernicerus syndrome, which is progressive of thalmoplegia and cardiac defect. There is another form of inheritance is multifactorial inheritance. It means that there are many factors. For example, genetic and environmental factors. Uh, often one gender is affected more than other. For example, like in cases of DDH or developmental dysplasia of the hip is more common in females than males. The question we need to ask ourselves before we order a genetic test, why does my patient need genetic testing? Indications for genetic testing, previous family history, consanguinity, multiple miscarriage, death in utero, congenital anomalies, developmental abnormalities like autism, uh, neurologic disorders like epilepsy, uh, multi-organ dysfunction. Uh, congenital anomalies, uh, you have either minor anomalies or major anomalies. Uh, if you have uh, more than or equal three minor anomalies, it's worth it to do the genetic testing like ear tags, two to three uh, to syndactyly epicanthal false uh, hypertellurism or one major anomaly is enough uh, to do the genetic testing like brain anomalies, congenital heart defect, cleft lip, cleft palate, omphalocele and limb absence. Chromosomal analysis, the fastest and the easiest is the blood test, which is peripheral blood lymphocytes, uh, testing the lymphocytes or the white blood cells. If a newborn in the nursery, for example, received the packed red uh, blood cell transfusion, this does not affect the genetic testing because we tested the white blood cells and not the red blood cells. Other sources like amniotic fluid or chorionic villus sampling, uh, cultured skin fibroblast, bone marrow cells. 
karyotype is a test to identify and evaluate the size, shape, and number of chromosome. This test is very beneficial. This is the most common test karyotype uh, to uh, be used to uh, diagnose triosomes like Down syndrome, sex chromosome anomalies like Turner syndrome, Klein filter syndrome. Visible deletions and duplications, translocations easily identified with karyotype. But we need to know the limitation. The limitation of karyotype that a G band blood karyotype can never exclude extremely subtle chromosome abnormalities. In this case, microarray will be beneficial, but no need to do microarray for a classic presentation of Down syndrome or a Turner or Klein filter. Uh, so this case is easily identified with karyotype, not microarray. DNA microarray is able to uh, measure the level of gene expression of all genes within a cell. It is useful for detecting micro deletions, micro duplications, and specific breakpoints, which cannot be detected with regular carrier type. Examples or, or indications for using DNA microarray, uh, multiple congenital anomalies, autism, and developmental delay. Fish test is an excellent choice to order if you suspect a syndrome associated with micro deletion. For example, uh, DeGeorge syndrome. Uh, if you do karyotype for DeGeorge syndrome, it will look normal, but fish test will be able to detect the micro deletion. How? By detecting a specific DNA sequence in a chromosome by using DNA probe containing fluorescence labeled the probe, and this will detect a specific sequence on the chromosome. If it gives two signal, this is normal, like here, giving two signal, and if it gives just one signal, a to, a, this is abnormal, and this is the long arm of chromosome 22, it's very short, and this is a micro deletion uh, on the long arm of chromosome 22, which is DeGeorge syndrome. It also can be used for Williams and other syndromes associated with micro deletion. If this test is negative and you still highly suspect DeGeorge syndrome, microarray will be the best choice. Fish test is widely available, is an excellent order for cases suspected with micro deletion, but very important to know the limitation. It is possible that rare, very small deletions may not be detected by fish test. In this case, microarray will be very helpful. This is the end of this presentation. Thank you. This video is only for educational purposes and not intended to direct the care of any specific patient. Please consult your physician or the physician of your child for the correct diagnosis and the proper treatment.